a WYFF News 4 sports special. I don't care if it's a preseason game. I don't care if it's a scrimmage. We want to win everything that we do. A new season of Carolina Panthers football. New teammates. That's what I always love. You know, it's football. You know, so you you just love it. And familiar (laughs) faces back on the field. It's a fun time of year, and that's what I'm really excited for. Now, Panthers preseason. The preseason shorter and the games that count are coming quicker. Three weeks from tomorrow, the Carolina Panthers begin their season right here against the New York Jets as a talented and young team aims to take a sizable step forward in year number two on your back row. Welcome into our Panthers preseason special alongside Julia Morris. I'm Mark Whiteman. Julia, this Carolina Panthers team started fast a year ago but lost nine of their final 11 games to finish their first season under Coach Rule 5-11. and 11. Yeah, and after that disappointing season, changes coming on both sides of the ball this offseason. Panthers making a trade with the New York Jets to acquire Sam Darnold, the quarterback, a former third overall pick in the 2018 NFL Draft. So he joins this team, hoping to lead this offense. And then also on the defensive side of the ball, Carolina drafting a superstar at the quarterback position, former Gamecock J.C. Horn. He was Panthers' first pick of this year's draft. And Horn all week lobbied to play in this game and eventually we did get to see Sam Darnold and J.C. Horn and the starters for the Carolina Panthers albeit briefly to show you a few of the highlights from tonight's game against the Baltimore Ravens the first home game of the season the first home game in front of a no capacity crowd no limit on the capacity in the crowd tonight since 2019 and as the first home game for Sam Darnold we got to see albeit very briefly but early on it was the Panthers defense showing out Hassan Reddick getting the interception on the very first drive of the game. Baltimore did not start Lamar Jackson, but the Panthers defense came out quick and got a nice pick right away. And then it was Sam Darnold on the field, only completed one pass, a connection with Robbie Anderson for 16 yards. He only played one drive. The Panthers got down into the red zone, actually had a few cracks in the touchdown, but were ultimately stuffed on fourth down. And then it was P.J. Walker getting the majority of the reps last week. Tonight it was Will Greer, the kid from North Carolina, third round pick in 2019 had a couple nice connections in this game looked good for the most part connected with Chuba Hubbard on a 29 yard pass also hit Shai Smith for a couple big receptions overall however as good as Greer looked the Carolina Panthers never able to punch the ball into the end zone the Ravens scoring a couple touchdowns in the second half and they win this preseason game 20 to 3. So look Julia you know what you could say about the preseason the scores don't matter it was all about trying to find out which backups can make this team starting to see those guys the starters on this team get reps that counted and really I think Carolina pleased overall at all the quality reps they got to their joint practice this week. I know we want to talk a little bit about some of the things that stood out to us in this game and we just showed you a few of those highlights from Will Greer. Obviously, the Panthers never able to get the ball in the end zone, but I really thought Greer looked good. He was 11 for 14 for 144 yards and four drives and a couple of nice connections with Karis Marshall Jr., the rookie at LSU. Also, as we just showed you, Shai Smith from South Carolina. Those guys can be counted on to build a little bit of the pass-catching depth on this Panthers team. Uh, Greer took a couple of bad sacks that stalled momentum, but I think overall an encouraging first half in this backup quarterback battle. A week ago, it was P.J. Walker looking pretty solid, making a couple big plays against the Colts, Julia. Tonight it was Greer's turn to show he deserves to be Sam Darnold's backup. Yeah, Will Greer definitely looking good. And you mentioned it earlier, Mark. It is the preseason, Mm -hmm. so we can't put too much stock into any of these games. But for me, what really stood out in the first half was the defensive Mm -hmm. effort. And I know that's the side of the ball that's been doing really well in training camp this past week. Defense had another big night tonight. We mentioned it in the highlights, the Hassan Reddick interception. That really set the tone early in this game and Reddick has a great story he walked on to the Temple football team in 2012 and played for Panthers head coach Matt Rule there so you have to think that Rule was probably thrilled to see Reddick make that play and another defensive play that stood out to me in the first half Frankie Louvu forcing a fumble and that's someone else that Matt Rule has talked about during camp saying he's a guy that 
when you want to pinpoint someone who does things you want them to do in a certain way, he's a great example of just doing things the way that he really wants players to, to execute them. So good to see Frankie Luvu also making a big play as well. And again, we mentioned it earlier, not a lot of time for starters in this game, but really what that does is provide more opportunities for backups to prove that they deserve to make this 53-man roster. The preseason's a big time for these backups to try and, you know, make their case to make this team. And a couple of players stood out in last week's game against the Indianapolis Colts. Terrace Marshall Jr., wide receiver, as Mark mentioned, yeah. rookie out of LSU, had three catches for 88 yards in the first half against Indianapolis. And running back Chuba Hubbard, ha Chuba Hubbard had seven carries for 80 yards in the first half against the Colts as well. But for Panthers head coach Matt Rule, the story of that game in Indianapolis was penalties. Carolina committed 10 penalties, including seven false starts. You know, the more that we get our team to understand that it's not about, you know, what you dress for game day or, you know, what they put about you on Twitter or two, three plays you made in the game. It's about what you do play in and play out, the better we're going to be. And, you know, I think or culturally, organizationally, I think a lot of our players came out of that game improved because um, they were like, hey, you know, if we just don't beat ourselves, you know, we have a chance to win. Rule did say he thinks his team got significantly better after its trip to Indianapolis. Again, Panthers starting quarterback Sam Darnold also playing kind of a blink and you miss him type yeah. of thing for Sam Darnold here tonight. He didn't play very much. He completed one pass for 16 yards. So Panthers fans going to have to wait a little bit to see what Darnold can do. But make no mistake about it, how the Panthers do this season, a lot of it will depend on how Darnold does leading the offense this year. And so far during camp, the Panthers Panthers have had a lot of great things to say about Darnold. Wide receiver Robbie Anderson said that Darnold has a new energy that he didn't have when both played for the Jets. And running back Christian McCaffrey says Darnold has stepped up as a leader for this team. He says he'll text guys late at night asking about plays and giving his input. So far in his NFL career as a starter, Darnold has 13 wins, 25 losses with 50 touchdowns and 46 turnovers. Quarterback saying, though, since he's been traded, he's been watching a lot of tape to see how he can get better, and he feels super confident heading into the season. For me, it's just about controlling what I can, and here we have you know, great skill, great offensive line, and um, a great defense, so for me, I'm just going to do everything that I can to control what I can. Panthers head coach Matt Rule also saying Darnold looked very prepared at the start of camp, and that's how he can lead this team. Rule also adding he wants to see Darnold continue to grind and outwork the competition. And, Mark, I think the biggest thing for Sam Darnold, the biggest question I have is can he be consistent yep. for Carolina this season? In 12 games last year, Darnold had 11 interceptions, so can he take care of the football? Now, granted, in New York, he was in a totally different situation. Jets didn't have a great offensive right. line, didn't have talented wide receivers around him, but still he's got to cut down on the mistakes and I want to see if he can be consistent and again, how he does that will set the tone for Carolina's offense this year. Yeah, Julian, I think you said it. it's no secret this guy has a ton of talent. He was a third overall pick just a few years ago, but turnovers have always been an issue for him. Even going back to college, he struggled with turnovers. 36 turnovers in two seasons at USC and he has not been able to cut down on them in the NFL. I think what you saw this offseason is Matt Rule and Joe Brady bet on their coaching ability, bet on a change of scenery, bet on themselves to get Darnold in here into their system. He's got the talent, he's got the arm, he's got the accuracy. If he can cut down on those turnovers, I think they're confident they'll have a more successful offense this year than they did a year ago. Teddy Bridgewater was good for the team, but they're, you know, they missed the big plays in the red zone when they needed them. I think they only threw for 16 touchdowns all year. When you average a passing touchdown a game in a passing league, you're just not getting it done offensively. So I, I do think the pieces are there for Sam Darnold, but can he put it all together? Can he make the plays without the turnovers? It's not just the interceptions. He's had a lot of fumbles in his career. You're talking about 50 touchdowns in his NFL career to this point and 46 turnovers. Interceptions, fumbles. Can he cut down on those? Can he make the big plays? 
plays, the moments he's flashed, can he put it all together consistently? And I think you said it, that's going to go a long way to defining just what this Panthers team can be. Yeah, and I think you mentioned it also with Joe Brady mm -hmm. and this new offense. And we saw what Joe Brady did at LSU. I mean, he's capable of running some high-powered offense. So I'm excited to see if the Panthers can have a bunch of explosive plays this year. Yeah, and certainly I think the question, too, is behind Sam Darnold, which one of those guys is going to win the backup job, as we mentioned a little bit earlier? It was Will, Will Greer tonight, last week. It was P.J. Walker, and that battle for the backup clearly unsettled as we head toward the start of the season. Both guys have now seen extensive action. Walker had a couple outstanding plays last week. He's a great story. Another guy who played for Matt Rule at Temple. He went undrafted in 2017, signed with the Annapolis Colts. Couldn't catch on there. In 2020, he became a star in the short-lived XFL. He was leading the league in passing yards and touchdowns before the season was shut down after five weeks due to COVID. And as for Greer, a third-round pick in 2019 out of West Virginia, had a great college career, but he didn't play a single snap in 2020. He completed six of ten passes for 31 yards last week, got much more action tonight, looked great. At one point, completed nine straight passes, and both quarterbacks just trying to make the most of these pre season opportunities. I mean, once the game get going, uh, my body is completely like numb to every situation. And uh, I just go out there and play. And I think me playing in the football game is a lot different than practice because I just feel like I'm more loose in, in games and my body just feel more loose and I'm able to just throw the ball however I want to during game time. Felt comfortable. Felt a lot more comfortable than I did in 2019. Um, feel good about the offense. Um, and I feel like I can play well. So, like I said, just got my job is to not worry about what the opportunity is or when it is, just take advantage of it. Greer, North Carolina native, so he's playing for his hometown team and certainly after tonight's effort, hoping to earn that backup job, a job and a battle that will continue into next week as well. Hey, we are just getting started on our Panthers preseason special. We've got plenty to talk about tonight. Earlier this week, I caught up with Panthers dynamic rookie running back Chuba Hubbard. Saw him make a couple big plays tonight. He made a few big plays last week in my one-on-one -on -one conversation with him about learning from Christian McCaffrey and what he's hoping to accomplish in year one in the NFL. Yeah, and you mentioned it, Mark. Chuba Hubbard, just one of a few exciting rookies that the Panthers have on their team this year. J.C. Horn, the former Gamecock, another one of them. I caught up with the cornerback during camp. You'll see that one-on-one -on -one interview straight ahead. Stay with us. You're watching our Panthers preseason special. Trying to get, you know, 1% better every day. Uh, trying to get better at my job. And, you know, I worry about the season when I get here. I'm just excited to be back out here playing football. Just trying to get the playbook down and stuff and just having fun. A former Gamecock staying in the Carolinas to start his NFL career. Cornerback J.C. Horn was the Panthers' first round draft pick this year, as well as the first defensive player taken off the board. As he heads into his rookie season, Horn knows that there are some adjustments he'll have to make, but he has a swag and a confidence about him that should serve him well at this level. I caught up with Horn at training camp at Wofford. I talked to him about how his time at South Carolina has prepared him for the NFL, what his goals are for this season, and some of the highlights he's had during training camp. Panthers first round draft pick and former South Carolina football player J.C. Horn is entering his first season with Carolina. J.C. joins me now. J.C., how has your time at South Carolina prepared you for your NFL career? Um, it prepared me tremendously. Um, having coached my champ and T-Rob, uh, the way we practice, the way we prepare it, uh, is real similar to Coach Rule. Um, tough practices, so I'm used to it. And the weather, of course, in Columbia is hot, just like it is now here. So uh, I'm used to it. They, they prepared me a lot. And your dad, of course, played in the NFL. What kind of advice has he given you heading into your rookie season? Um, just get better every day. Uh, and he, know, he knows I'm a real competitive guy. So he just tells me, man, that those receivers and tight ends, they're in the league for a reason, too. So don't get too, down too hard on yourself when they beat you. It happens. Great quarterback. But, you know, also keep that competitive edge and just try to get better every day. Earlier in camp, you mentioned you were working on your footwork. What else have you been trying to improve on during camp? Um, just just knowing offense. Uh, just, just knowing what's going to happen before it happens. Um, and that's the way you make plays in the league. So I'm just 
I'm behind. I'm a rookie. These guys have been in it five, six years, so I'm just always picking their brain, trying to trying to catch up to them and find out what they're thinking and then apply it to mine. A couple of big plays for you during camp so far. Interceptions, a pick six. What has been your favorite play that you've made so far? My favorite play? Man, I can't I can't really say I have one. Uh, you know, as a DB, it's always exciting getting your hands on the ball no matter what. Uh, but, you know, I just love to come out here and compete with those guys and um, just, just make plays and help my team out. Which one were you most fired up about out of your interceptions that you've had so far during camp? They were all about even. I, I can't lie to you. They were, they were all even. Maybe the first one, since it was the first one, uh, I was a little excited. But, you know, I'm just happy any time I can get my hands on the ball. What feedback has Coach Rule given you about what he wants you to kind of focus on as you get ready for the season? Um, just, just being less grabby. Um, you know, we had officials out here in, in those couple days. I ain't have no PIs, thank God. So, you know, I feel like I've been getting better at it. Um, and just he just wants me to be myself, you know, keep, keep being competitive, keep coming out here every day trying to get better. JC, what are you most looking forward to about your first NFL game when you guys take on the Jets? Man, just, just going out there for the first, for the first time, um, you know, I'm just ready to take in that whole experience and, you know, just realize that dream came true, that I, I made it. And, you know, after that, it's back to work. It's time to make more plays. Looking forward to seeing how J.C. Horn does this season. I think it's so cool when South Carolina guys stay in the Carolinas for the next step of their career. The former Gamecock getting ready for to play for the Panthers this season. And, you know, J.C. Mark is a big physical guy. That should serve him well at this level. And the things that stood out to me during camp, there were a couple of things that Matt Rule said. After J.C.'s first interception of camp, Rule said, hey, you draft a guy with 33-inch yeah. arms. Those are the type of plays you expect from him. Him, right that was awesome I love that and the other thing that he said was that JC really has the mindset to succeed at this level he says he's the type of guy that he thinks will never be satisfied he'll always be pushing to get better and that should definitely help him as he gets set to begin his rookie season as well Julie I love the conversation you had with him and I love what he said at the end about what coach rules told him about being less grabby and trying not to be so handsy I thought that was a pretty shrewd coaching move by by Matt rule earlier in training camp when JC Horn had that string of interceptions. There was a lot of buzz about him. He came right out. Coach Rule came right out and said, yeah, but he's grabbing and holding way too much. We need him to cut down on that. We don't want those flags in the NFL. That's not something that gets flagged nearly as much on the college level. So telling him to, to be physical without being too over physical, I thought was a pretty sharp move on his part. Way to just kind of tamp down the rookie's confidence a little bit. Remember, remind him he has to earn it. But I, I love what Scott Fitterer, the new GM of the Panthers, said earlier this week when talking about J.C. Horn. He said he has an alpha mentality. He wants to be the leader. I think you saw that come out a little bit in those joint practices with the Ravens this week. There was a small skirmish that broke out on Wednesday. Horn watched one of his teammates get knocked over, and he got right in the mix. He said afterwards, hey, you know, we watched one of our teammates go down. Anyone would do the same thing. He was also talking trash throughout the week. I think he brings a very vibrant personality to this team and, of course, a guy that I think the Panthers are going to be really excited about watching for a number of years. Super talented, super physical, super athletic. I think he's going to be a special, special player for the Carolina Panthers for many years to come. And we're certainly excited to watch his career. But hey, J.C. Horn, Julian, not the only Gamecock on this roster, just one of four coming up in the next block. I caught up with another former Gamecock hoping to carve out a much larger role in year three in the NFL. My interview with Dennis Daly, still to come. Plus, running back Christian McCaffrey is healthy this year after missing 13 games last season. You'll find out what he says he learned while sidelined last year, straight ahead. is a young man if he keeps his focus he will be a dynamic football player great job of using his hands stacks Gamecock fans like yep seen that before Shai Smith flashing the skill that made him one of the SEC's top wideouts in his preseason debut last weekend and Smith has made a number of highlight worthy catches over his first 
preseason with the Carolina Panthers. Had a couple of big plays tonight that we got to watch as well. But he's not the only Gamecock on this team hoping to have a big role on this year's roster. Dennis Daly is another. The third-year offensive lineman had a strong rookie season a few years ago, but he only played five games last year before ending the season on injured reserve. He is totally healthy and ready to play for the Panthers this season. I caught up with him earlier this week after a joint practice with the Ravens. Year three for big man Dennis Daly, a former South Carolina Gamecock, of course, played his college ball in Columbia and working to find a starting role here with the Carolina Panthers. Dennis, thank you for taking some time. How beneficial are these joint practices to measure up against one of the best defenses in the NFL and just see where you stack up against competition leading into the start of the season? Uh, it's very beneficial. Uh, it's, it's not like going against our teammates every day. We get to see different competition. And like you say, one of the best defenses out here with the best defensive line, so it gives us an edge and we can, you know, butt heads with these guys out here every day. You started a few games last year, but your season ended on the injured reserve. What are your goals going going into year three? Uh, mo most, most importantly, stay healthy, man. Uh, last year I was hurt more than I ever been. Started off with the high ankle sprain, but uh, this year I want to stay healthy and I want to capitalize on all the opportunities I get. You feel healthy right now? Yes, totally sir, healthy? 100%. Did you change anything about your off-season routine to kind of ensure you would stay healthy? Uh, no, I actually kept it the same, but uh, like the COVID year last year, you know, everything was delayed, so I kind of started my process a little later than I should have, so this year, you know, I got the edge on it, and we got a regular season, well, actually a regular off season. so I was able to do my normal training and everything else. How's it feel to have a guy in Shai Smith who went to your same college, you played a little bit in college together, and he's now on the same team with you? It feels great, man. Uh, Shai, uh, JC Horn, mm -hmm. Joseph Charlton, man, all those my guys, man. It's great to see them every day. Uh, it reminds me of college, man, when I was seeing those boys every day. want to ask you about that, of course. Obviously, a big year of transition with South Carolina. A lot of excitement about Shane Beamer. What have you seen from him so far? Uh, I'm not very familiar with Shane. I came in uh, a little after he left. So, uh, But from what I do know, like they got all the players and all the pieces that they need to be a very great team. They got the coaching and everything else. Just got to put it together. I know you said health. What else would you define as a successful season for you here with the Panthers? Uh, playing in the game, man. Getting as many reps as I can and, you know, upgrading my play, my play and everything else. Dennis Daly entering year three with the Carolina Panthers, former South Carolina Gamecock, excited about what's to come in Columbia and excited about his season in Charlotte. So where Dennis Daly fits into the picture certainly remains to be seen, but the Panthers still moving the pieces around. Taylor Moten, who has started all 48 games at right tackle over the last three seasons, he earned a four-year, $71 million contract extension this offseason. Moten has spent a lot of time at left tackle in camp, and the Panthers continuing to try to find the best combination up front on the offensive line, leading to a interesting comparison from Coach Matt Rule earlier this week. I mean, I think we feel good about our starting five, a couple, you know, two, three more guys there uh, that we feel good about. Um, yeah, but we're a work in progress, you know. We're we're uh, we're, we're like I-85 on the way down here. We're under construction, you know. So we've got we've got uh, we've got some work to do. And what we really need is we need some, you know, we, we need some of our young players to come along. Yeah, it's a comparison we've heard Dabo Sweeney make a lot about his team. The road to progress is like I-85. It's always under construction. Certainly hopes construction for the Panthers' offensive line finishes quicker than it takes on I-85, Julia. That one gave me a laugh. That's mm -hmm. a good one. But in all seriousness, how that offensive line comes along will play a big role in helping out running back Christian McCaffrey this year. For all the talent that the Panthers have on offense, make no mistake about it, how the offense does this year depends in large part on the Panthers star running back. In 2019, McCaffrey became just the third NFL player to rush for a thousand yards and to also have a thousand receiving yards in the same season. He was the first overall pick in nearly every fantasy draft in the world, but couldn't stay on the field last year. He missed all but three games dealing with various injuries, first the high ankle sprain, then shoulder and quad injuries, but he's totally healthy and totally appreciative of the health, developing a a whole new love for the game as he sat on the sidelines for most of the season.
you know, you kind of are forced to, when you go through adversity to, you know, either either fold or, or keep going. And it was tough at first, but, man, I learned so much and, uh, you know, have such a big appreciation for this game and what it's given me. And, um, you know, we'll never take that for granted. McCaffrey touched the ball more than 400 times in 2019. Have to think the coaching staff wants to trim that number a bit to keep him healthy and on the field this year. Of course, McCaffrey didn't even play tonight. Yeah. I think that speaks to how badly <laughs> they want him to be healthy this season. But, Mark, what really stands out to me about McCaffrey is that stat I just mentioned. You know, he had 403 touches in 2019, about 25 touches a game. So the Panthers love to give him the ball. And the reason why they love to do that, you know, Matt Rule said something during camp which really stuck out to me he said that he's a guy that can run the ball but also catch the ball out of the backfield and make big plays so he's a guy that Matt Rule doesn't have to worry about subbing in for because really Christian McCaffrey is a jack of all trades that can do so much for this offense so they definitely want to keep him healthy because having Christian McCaffrey on this offense just makes the Panthers a totally different team yeah and the NFL is so much better when he's healthy and upright he's really just such a remarkable player and someone we all want to see stay healthy and and certainly every Panthers fan wants to see stay healthy. But you mentioned that key number earlier, Julia. He had over 400 touches in that 2019 season. And I think maybe you saw some of the wear and tear of that last year. Over the last 15 years, only four guys in the NFL have gone over 400 touches in a single season. Chris Johnson did it in 2009 with the Titans, the CJ 2K year. DeMarco Murray in 2014 with the Cowboys. And then Le'Veon Bell did it in 2017 for the Pittsburgh Steelers. So CMC certainly one of the transcendent players of the game, but he's not the biggest. Maybe limiting his touches, developing a little bit more depth behind him, I think, would certainly be beneficial to the Panthers. And they had that depth last year in a guy that Carolina fans know quite well. Mike Davis, the former Gamecock, was the backup to McCaffrey and certainly seemed like a guy who would have been able to spell CMC a little bit more often had McCaffrey stayed healthy all of last season. But obviously McCaffrey went down early and Davis was the guy from there. If there was one bright side to his injury-riddled campaign, it was that Davis got to show exactly what he could do and had the best season of his NFL career. He was not McCaffrey. I mean, no one is. But Mike Davis filled in admirably with a career year topping 1,000 yards total from scrimmage and scoring eight touchdowns as well. He was the primary option for the Panthers in both the running and the screen game. And a guy who this offseason got a nice contract from the Atlanta Falcons to go down there and be their lead ball carrier. Yeah, looking forward to seeing what Mike Davis does for them. And then, of course, we got to see a lot of a rookie, run mm -hmm. rookie running back tonight. Yeah. Mark Chuba Hubbard, you caught up with him at training camp. Yeah, the Panthers replacing Mike Davis with Chuba Hubbard, who had a tremendous career at Oklahoma State, ran for over 2,000 yards himself in 2019. I caught up with him earlier this week to talk about McCaffrey's influence on his early days and what he hopes to accomplish in his rookie campaign. The Carolina Panthers using a fourth round selection on dynamic halfback Chuba Hubbard in April's NFL draft, trying to build in that backfield alongside Christian McCaffrey, one of the most electric players in college football over the last few years. And Chuba, I want to start in an obvious place. I'm wondering how you got your name. Uh, my name's Nigerian. Um, I know a lot of people think it's Chuba, Tuba, Shuba, a bunch of different things, but it's, uh, it's Nigerian. So. What does it mean? Uh, gift of God gift to God. Well, you certainly showed that in Stillwater, and hopefully the Panthers get that out of you as well. Um, I, I wanted to ask you about your big game, your big play, obviously, on Sunday against the Indianapolis Colts. You get stacked up on the line. I thought you showed really nice vision to bust it outside, break it for 59 yards. Obviously, you get chased down, um, and you were so disappointed about that afterwards. What went into that play, and was that kind of a welcome to the NFL moment, showing a little bit more of that league speed? Yeah, I mean, it was just a, it was a great play by offense, good flow, good push I think it was third or fourth and one just kind of ran the ball hard um, it was a good run like I said I got to score that but and I'm moving on to the next thing we play the Ravens this week so that's my focus I think a lot of our viewers probably don't know that you're from Canada born and raised in Alberta and then you go down to Stillwater Oklahoma what was the culture shock like for you there yeah I mean it was definitely different I'm from a big city uh, Stillwater's a little college mm -hmm. town uh, uh, definitely got that southern uh, tang to it, um, but I love Stillwater. I mean, it was a good place. I'm real homey, and in some ways it reminded me of home, so that's one of the reasons I chose it. And how does Charlotte compare? 
Charlotte's definitely different than uh, Stillwater. Definitely, definitely different. I really didn't know what to expect, to be honest. I've never been to North Carolina. Um, and to be honest, it's a, really, it's a really nice city. It's a really, really nice city. And I keep telling my mom and stuff and all of them, like, come down, y'all gonna like it. So, um, yeah, I've enjoyed it. They haven't got a chance to visit you yet? My mom just came down for a little bit. That's her first time coming down since I got drafted and stuff. So it was good that she was here. She could see Charlotte and kind of get me settled in and just kind of enjoy everything that's going on. Chuba, you get a chance to play behind and learn from one of the truly great transcendent players in the NFL and Christian McCaffrey. What have you learned from him in your short time with the Panthers so far? Um, you know, I get that question a lot. Um, I learn a lot. I'm always trying to learn from him every day. Um, the biggest thing is just, you know, how he carries himself as a professional. Um, it's a bit, that's a big thing. You know, being professional is how you practice, how you carry yourself off the field, how you prepare, all these different things. So just, just really that. It's no secret he's kind of the engine that makes the offense go. I'm sure they'd probably like to scale back on the 400 touches he got a few years ago. How do you view your role as a rookie? Um, whatever the role they want me at, I, that's, what I, that's what it is for me. Whether they want me on special teams, I'll be that. Whether it, that's the two-back, three-back, four-back, I'll do whatever the team needs me to do. What would you view as a successful rookie season? Winning a Super Bowl. That's it. That's easy right there. That's an easy standard right there. Chuba, thank you so much. I really appreciate your time. Best of luck. Looking thank forward you. to watching you in the NFL. Thank you. I appreciate it. Chuba Hubbard, Panthers rookie running back, getting ready for his first season in the league. He's running so Super Bowl or bust for Chuba Hubbard in year number one. Loved, loved, loved my conversation with him. I really enjoyed watching him play in college. He was so much fun to watch for the Oklahoma State Cowboys. And I think he's shown through two preseason games and made a lot of big plays in practice that he's certainly going to have a big part in his rookie season on this Panthers team. Yeah, certainly a fun part of the preseason yeah. is hearing from these rookies as they adjust to the NFL. But on the other hand, a tough part of the preseason is when players get hurt. Former Greer High School standout, Troy Pride Jr. was hurt last week against the Indianapolis Colts. You'll find out the details on that injury coming up. Plus, Matt Rule entering year number two with the Carolina Panthers organization, the fifth head coach in Panthers franchise history. As he enters his second season, you'll find out what he expects from his team. That's straight ahead. Stay with us. You're watching our Panthers preseason special. A tough break for Panthers cornerback Troy Pride Jr. last week in Carolina's preseason opener. The Greer High School product tore his ACL and is out for the year. Last year as a rookie, Pride played in 14 games for Carolina, making eight starts, tallying 41 tackles and two passes defended. And after he was drafted by the Panthers last year, Pride said it was truly a dream come true to have the opportunity to play for his hometown team. Before he got hurt, I caught up with him at training camp to ask him about having camp so close to home at Wofford and what he learned from his first NFL season. Former Greer High School standout Troy Pride Jr. is getting ready for his second NFL season with the Panthers. Troy, what was your focus this offseason that you wanted to improve on as you head into your second year? Um, for me, it was, um, first of all, my eyes and coverage, where they're supposed to be, when I'm supposed to be on man, having them on the receiver's um, belt buckle, and then when I'm supposed to be in the zone, having them you know, in the right place. Um, so with that, it's my eyes, and this is my footwork and press. I'm um, doing a better job of you know, being attached to receivers, doing a better job of winning at the top of the route, and then you know, running and playing football after that. Being here at Wofford for the first time for camp, having your family here, what has that experience been like for you? It's been wonderful. I mean, yesterday it was blazing hot, and I wore a long sleeve, like the smartest guy in the world. But um, it's been good, you know, because this is, you know, my roots for me. We went to Top Golf yesterday, and it was like 10 minutes away from the house. You know, this is just home for me. Um, played here in the Shrine Bowl game, uh, played Spartanburg here. It's, it's just great. What has been the highlight of camp so far for you? For me, it's just been, you know, interacting with my teammates, having an opportunity to all be around each other in a you know, closed space. And, you know, just coming out here and competing. Um, that's, that's what I always love, you know, it's football, you know, so, you know, you just love it. What do you think this cornerback group is capable of this season? I mean, anything that we want. I think the ceiling, there's no ceiling. Um, I think that, you know, we've got a lot of talent. I think we've got a lot of great dudes in the room. And we're just pushing each other to do the best every single day. 
What's it been like competing with a guy like J.C. Horn? The good is ultimate competitor. Um, very technically sound. I mean, he's done this basically, it seems like, for his entire life because, I mean, he's so good at what he does. Um, it's been good, though. You know, you feed off that energy, you feed off, you know, when he's hype, when he's making plays, and you, know, you do your best to, you know, get back at it. What feedback has Coach Rule given you as you head into your second season with the team? Um, just to, you know, continue to compete, continue to do, you know, what I'm supposed to do to get on the field and play the way I'm supposed to play, you know, just upping it, you know, taking that competitiveness to another level and being a guy that can really, you know, make a mark in this league. What are your goals for this season? I mean, right now it's just, you know, being the brand, being, you know, a team player, a team guy. Um, you know, I got so much in store that, you know, I can't really share until it all goes down. After last season, what gives you confidence that this team can have a better year than last year? I mean, you learn from things like that. You learn from adversity. And um, when it's like a phoenix out of the ashes, a phoenix will rise. That's how it goes, you know. You, you got to build off of, you know, the stuff that didn't work and just, you know, be better for the next year. See that last shot of Pride smiling. Really tough that he won't be able to play this season, but we certainly hope he recovers quickly. Yeah, appropriate. He said Phoenix rising from the ashes because that's what he's going to be aiming to do next year. He seems like such a great kid. You hate to see anyone get injured. Obviously, injuries are part of the game, but you never like to see it happen, especially a young player trying to prove himself in the NFL and a kid we can all root for in Troy Pride Jr. But as his head coach said earlier this week, this isn't the end of his career. He will be back next year, and he will be back better. I, I feel so awful for him. You know, I don't want to uh, uh, say anything about. You know, I feel bad even talking about it because I mean, he was doing he was doing a good job. He was playing well. Just you know, as a coach, it makes you sick to your stomach seeing him and a couple other guys got banged up in the game. And you know, I, as I told Troy, he's been fast his whole life. You know, he'll come back from this injury and, and uh, he'll be fast again next year and he'll continue to grow as a player. Had to go through several times and he made. And I think also worth noting, Julia, he's going to get the opportunity to see the game in a whole different light this year, more analytical side of things watching from the sideline. Yeah, hopefully he'll learn a lot for sure. And just as Pride was set to enter his second season with the Panthers, Carolina head coach Matt Rule also entering his second year with the team. When Carolina owner David Tepper hired Rule just two years ago, he said that he hired him because he thought Rule had what it takes to build this organization and set it up for the next 30 to 40 40 years. That's because Rule has a track record of building programs from the ground up. We've seen him do this before. He took Baylor from a one-win team to a Sugar Bowl appearance in just three seasons. He did the same at Temple. The Owls had two wins in his first season. Then he led them to back-to-back ten-win seasons in a conference championship. Last year was Carolina's fourth losing season in the last five years, but Rule saying during training camp that this year's team is aligned in terms of knowing what it needs to get done to be better. We're going to have some adversity along the way. Every day can't be a great day. Let's learn from the bad days. Let's build on the good days and then hope by the end of training camp we're in good position to start the season. And then hope that we're a team during the season that gets better and better and better. I'm just yeah. going to mention something okay. real quick on the back okay. end here. Yeah. Rule, of course, played himself as well. He was a linebacker at Penn State from 1994 to 1997. The thing that stands out to me about Matt Rule, you really feel like he's an honest guy. What you see is what you get with him. The thing that stood out to me that he said during training camp, he was very honest after the Panthers had a night practice at Wofford at Gibbs Stadium. He said, guys were too amped up. I just want them to be themselves. And consistency is the thing that he really harps on. So we'll see if the Panthers can have a more consistent season than they did last year under Matt Rule. Yeah, I think you said it best, right? there he seems like a very authentic guy authenticity what you see is what you get with him and the players want that everyone's professional here and they want the honest straight shooters and Matt Rule certainly has been able to do that and as you said he's a program builder this is what he does he knows how to build a program from the ground up he's getting the guys in here that he wants this is not a one-year thing Rome wasn't built in a day the Carolina Panthers organization won't be either so Matt Rule building this program his way building the Panthers in his image and I think you'll see them take a step forward this year. Anyways, we got a sample of what this Panthers team, Matt Rule's second season, will look like tonight. Just very briefly saw some of the starters in, but what can we expect as the Panthers get back on the field in less than a week's time for the Pittsburgh Steelers? That's still to come here on our Panthers preseason special. And coming up as well, we'll talk about what factors could go a long, well in, long way in determining just how well this team plays this year. That's straight ahead in our Panthers preseason special.
Hey, welcome back to Panthers preseason here at the bank where the Carolina Panthers lost tonight to the Baltimore Ravens 20 to 3. But hey, look, it's the preseason. Scores don't matter. All that's important tonight is evaluating this team and seeing what the Panthers can become. And as we look ahead to what we think this Panthers team can be, we want to take a look at some of the keys to this season, the things we think might define just how good this Carolina Panthers team will be. Julian, I think the obvious place to begin in my keys is Sam Darnold, the Panthers' new quarterback, acquired from the New York Jets this offseason, a former number three overall pick, certainly has the talent, has shown it in flashes with the New York Jets, but was too turnover prone. I think if Darnold can take a big step forward this year in his first season in Carolina, the Panthers could potentially be a playoff contender. If he doesn't, and we see more of the same as what we saw in New York, then the Panthers could very well be considering a quarterback with a top five, top ten pick in next year's draft. I also think you got to find some more guys, develop the depth offensively around Darnold. Last year was very consolidated. It was DJ Moore, it was Curtis Samuel, it was Robbie Anderson and Mike Davis when Christian McCaffrey went down. They went out this offseason, they tried to acquire more offensive playmakers. They drafted Chuba Hubbard and Shai Smith and Terrace Marshall. They brought in Dan Arnold, a tight end who's got great receiving Chops. I think diversifying the talent and the, the targets around Darnold will go a long way towards making this offense less predictable. And then lastly, they got to start to perform better close in these games. There were so many games that came down to the wire last year that the Panthers could just not finish. Eight of their 11 losses last year were by eight points or less. As this team continues to grow, part of growing up is part of finding out how to win close games. And the Panthers did not show that last year. I think if they can this year, they'll take a step forward. Yeah, Mark, and you mentioned Sam Darnold as your first mm -hmm. key. My first key kind of goes along with that. Sam Darnold, an obvious key to the Panthers' success this season. But I also think that a lot depends on how well Darnold will gel with his wide receivers. Yeah. Um, I think it's important that Carolina continues to develop the wide receiver game that it had last year in DJ Moore and Robbie Anderson. They combined for 2,289 receiving yards, the second most among wide receiver duos in the NFL and the third highest among wide receiver duos in a season in franchise history. And then, you know, when Carolina has those um, offensive weapons, with those wide receivers, it makes them that much better when they have that along with Christian McCaffrey running the football, which brings me to my second key. It's no secret Christian McCaffrey is the Panthers' best player. If he isn't healthy, Carolina will, of course, have other running backs that it can turn to, but none of them are as good at being pass-catching running backs the way McCaffrey is. If the Panthers have McCaffrey healthy and can use him to make a big play late in games, that will be a key for this team's success. And finally, on the defensive side of the ball, the Panthers have to have better play from the secondary. I think the play of J.C. Horn as well as Dante Jackson is critical for this team. Jackson battled a turf toe injury last year but has 10 interceptions in three years with the Panthers. Horn, of course, a rookie, but a lot will be expected from both of those players. Yeah, I think you mentioned it right there. J.C. Horn in that secondary, a guy we're excited to see a lot more of and we're excited to see more of the starters next week. Still to come, we're taking a look at what the Panthers expect out of next week's game. They didn't play the starters long tonight, but they got a lot of good on good work. We're hearing from Coach Rule about the joint practices with the Ravens. You're watching our Panthers preseason special. Stay with us. Hey, welcome back to our Panthers preseason special. The Carolina Panthers losing in their preseason game tonight against the Baltimore Ravens, 20-3. to But as we've said a couple of times, it's the preseason. The scores don't really count. And what I saw early from the defense, Julia, I think was very impressive. The Panthers' defense forcing two turnovers early in the game on the first drive. And I think the Panthers' defensive starters looked really good in their two series that they played. It was a continuation of a strong week of practice. Thursday, in a joint practice against the Baltimore Ravens, they had five turnovers. They got a lot of good on good work this week against the Ravens, did so last week against the Indianapolis Colts, but what can we expect out of the team this Friday, next Friday, against the Pittsburgh Steelers? Matt Rule clarified that earlier this week. And really, we're trying to trend towards, you know, that, that Steelers game's a short turnaround, so it's three games in 12 days. It's really unique, so that Steelers game's really the time where we're planning on getting the most work, but we'd like to get some work this week, but we've got more physical, hard one-on-one -on -one reps than probably I don't know if any other team did two joint practices. Some of them might have, but to come out here for two and a half hours, two days in a row, versus that caliber physical of a team, you'll never get that in a preseason game. 
So that Steelers game will be the closest thing we get to a dress rehearsal prior to the start of the season. Julie, I expect to see the starters play for nearly the full first half, if not the entire first half. And of course, a game you can watch Friday night right here in WIFF4. Looking forward to that game for sure. Stick with us. We'll wrap up our Panthers preseason special coming up after the break. Hey, welcome back to our Panthers preseason special alongside Julia Morris. I'm Mark Whiteman. As we close up at the bank after a fun night here in Charlotte, the crowd was rocking. Over 60,000 people announced attendance. Julia, what were your final thoughts here as the Panthers lose 20 to 3, but certainly had some nice flashes early? Yeah, even though they lost, I mean, this is the preseason, so no reason to panic. Yeah. And obviously, we got to look at a lot of players that we might not normally see. Defense stood out in the first half. I'm looking forward to seeing the starters play more next week, hopefully. And you will see those starters play right here in WIF. F4 against the Pittsburgh Steelers next Friday night. Thank you for joining us on our Panthers preseason special. For Julia Morris, I'm Mark Wyman. WIFF News 4 is next.